Hi, my name is Brian. Today we're going to do a cinematography and technical breakdown of a short film we shot a couple months ago called Grana. This was a piece directed by myself and Nate Stranzel that was an accompanying film to a mural being painted in downtown LA that was dedicated to showing Kobe Bryant not only as an athlete but as a storyteller. So uh, we put together this three minute short film. It's linked in the description below. You can go watch it if you want to take a peek at it before we get into the nitty gritty of how we shot it and everything. And yeah, we'll just break down the tech specs really quick. We shot it on a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, uh, Red Helium 8K for one day of shooting, and it was all on one lens. It was a Kawa 16H 2x D-Squeeze anamorphic lens uh, with a Helios as a taking lens. So it was kind of homemade jerry rig anamorphic rig, which was fun to shoot on. Very tight focal length as far as just having one lens set basically with us this whole time. So presented some challenges in terms of how we're going to shoot our wides, our establishing shots, on this longer focal length, but it was fun. It was it was really cool uh, that we were able to get the piece done and everything. And there was glimmer glass, I think, throughout the, the shoot. So yeah, with that being out of the way, uh, we mostly just used Aperture or other brands of LED lights throughout the entire shoot, but let's just get right down into the breakdown. So we'll go full screen over here. And here we go, we're starting with a quote. And we go into the first shot here. We'll get to this in a second. This was just laid out on a soccer field with a one foot by four foot softbox, just blasting on and battery powered. Um, this was just natural light right over here. We're getting into the setup shortly in a second. So these are kind of fun. So these close ups that you see with the really distorted blur right over here and everything, these are just shot with uh, some $20 diopters on Amazon that allow for a closer focus. Super fun to show basically any lens as a macro lens. So you can get these really kind of, you know, it's not the cleanest image and everything, but it really distorts the image in a fun way where, you know, you have this kind of on the outside. That's all done in camera with these little adapters. So uh, I'll actually link those below so you guys can check them out. And so here we are on our first shot that we'll talk about. So we just set our camera white balance to kind of give this uh, practical light that we obviously couldn't change, kind of a green glow in frame. And then we just have a light on a combo stand right out here, 600X, blasting in through these windows that are right over here. No diffusion or anything. I uh, just set to like 3200 Kelvin to give a little bit of a warm glow right over there. And this dolly pushing that we did was actually on a rickshaw. It kind of looks like this with a little seat on it. And then you kind of sit on the seat and then someone pushes the rickshaw. So it's not like a full Fisher dolly that moves super slow and everything, but it allows for like, you know, some handheld push-ins, really fast kind of handheld running shots that aren't as shaky as running shots. And we use that throughout the piece. So I'll kind of point out those shots and everything. Uh, that was just from a local rental house. All natural light right here, nothing crazy. Again, we're using the diopters, and this is just, I think, a softbox out of frame lighting this uh, this whole setup. So under this shot, this was right outside of Crypto.com Arena. We just set up two C-stands right over here. Uh, from the C-stands, we just used some hangers, hung the jerseys, and then just removed that in post. So pretty easy there. Windy day, so the jerseys were blowing all over, but kind of a cool floating effect. Uh, this was the mural, the beginning of the painting of the mural, just all shot in shade, nothing fancy. Coming into one of our first room setups and everything. So Brady Bissett was our gaffer on this day, and he actually did a lighting breakdown of this on his channel if you want to see it more in depth. Um, but this is just, I think we had a full grid cloth over the window on the outside. No lights coming through. It was just a super bright, sunny day where the sun was pointed through this window at the time. And then these shears bringing it down, you know, maybe an extra stop of light or something. But you can kind of tell that, you know, we hung these shears up with the way they're falling here. And then you can see over there... Um, but yeah, bringing shears into frame is like one of the best ways to show windows in frame, I think. Otherwise, it just either blows out or it looks super weird unless you have ND gel or a bunch of light to match in the room. And then we also had an F22C uh, boomed in over here with an egg crate on it. That's just giving this little extra kiss of light on her face. And then everything you see on this side of the room, obviously the lights in the room are off, uh, is just a bunch of negative fill and duvetine hung up to give that some shape. Same exact setup, we just brought the F22C in a little bit closer to add this kiss and kind of wrap on the face and everything. Super sweet. I love how the bokeh of the cow kind of falls off down there. And next we're going in this. We can see we're using the diopters again. That's how we're getting all these pixels right here that look really cool on the TV. Um, and we're just playing a soccer game, like YouTube highlight clips or something. And this kid was awesome. He was actually a soccer player, so he was super interested in watching the soccer. That's how we actually cast all of... Uh, the athletes was we well with the basketball player and the soccer kid we actually made sure um we hit up local soccer teams and soccer coaches and then with the runner she was through a talent agency but that's actually how we found these people so they actually could play in ball which was awesome 
Uh, this shot, one of my favorite shots of the film, this is just Dana Dolly pushing. Again, we have the diopters to allow us to get that closer focus on and just pausing at the frame right here for a second. Uh, lighting setup we have here is you're getting a little blue kiss on the face from the TV as it's playing. And then we're kind of catching that in the eye too, right over there. Um, we have the green soccer field you can see there. And then I think we might've put a little bit of light above the TV to add that extra little blue and make it amplified a little bit. Uh, over here, we have a green Nova, not a green Nova, a Nova set to green blasting into this wall of the room, kind of giving all this room tone that's kind of green right over here. Um, and then over here, we had two 300 X's blasting in through a small little window up there with a sheet of diffusion in between them. And that was kind of telling where this light was motivated from. And then the way we actually filled in his face was with a light mat 2L, which is like a two foot by one foot light panel, I think, similar to the F22X bicolor RGB. I don't know what it was, but it's given that glow that we're getting on the face and kind of wrapping this light that's supposed to be coming in from the window, as well as a little bit of haze in the back of the room, which you don't see in this shot too much, but it you know, it's in there otherwise. Uh, just love everything about this shot. The, the levels are super kind of fun and balanced in a way that I thought looks really good. So one of my favorite shots of the, of the film for sure. This was just in a studio on a like $5 cardboard black surface that we just stood the book up on and then tied some fishing wire to this hook uh, that Nate removed in post. And so that's how we opened it up. The haze is just from a smoke machine. Um, I remember when we shot, so fun story about this film is we actually shot the film for a budget of like $100 a year prior before we actually shot this and used that to pitch uh, companies on funding the mural and everything. And so the way we first shot this was when we didn't have a fog machine, we shot shots similar to this. And for haze, we actually used a vape to haze up the, the book, which was really weird. Yeah, we, we don't do that too much, but that was how we, we hazed it up at the, at the moment. Uh, and they did some VFX to add that in right there. More diopter shots that you can see. You can really see the funkiness of like the plus 10 diopter. These things are really, really cool. Um, this is more of the kind of rickshaw push-ins, the rickshaw dolly that I was talking about. So this one was actually just handheld, but then this one was sitting on the rickshaw and sitting on the rickshaw. And you stabilize that and post a little bit, but yeah, nothing happening there. Right here, this scene, we actually didn't use any light on it, so it was all natural. Turned off all the lights in the hallway other than this one that you see right up here. We turned the skylight a little bit more blue in post, so you can kind of see that blue coming in there, that little blue coming in on the hair. And then this was darkened in post too. So uh, we actually didn't do that on set, which is kind of knowing if you know what you can do in color, obviously saving time on set where you can is awesome. And same with this little light on his face. I think we might've had a small light bouncing in, but we really brought up a lot of this detail in post, just putting a mask around our boy here. Um, this one, same exact setup as before. We have the, you know, the light mat 2L giving that kiss on his face, a B7C, and then we turn the Nova to blue back there. Moving next, we got a fun title sequence. And now we're getting into the basketball gym scene. So we'll break this down super quick. We had two Novas just out of frame here, pumping, pumping a lot of blue light, uh, giving this kind of blue glow to the whole gym and everything. We didn't want to have the lights on just because we lost any sense of dramatic moodiness, depth and everything. So we waited till night so that the, the skylight windows, uh, we'd have no light coming in. We talked about covering them up and shooting during the day, but it was just easier to come in at night. So shot this at night, turned all the lights off out there. And then besides the two Novas that we have over here, we have, you can kind of see the foot right here on a combo stand, a big uh, Aperture 600C, 600X, whatever it was, it was set to daylight. And that's just blasting right in through this window, giving us kind of our main key whenever we're out here shooting. And then over here on three stands, we have three fours of 500s kind of blasting off this wall. And that's just giving some more glow into this little room. Uh, so that when we shoot him this way, facing this way, we kind of see his silhouette up against the windows. We don't just completely lose him. And you can kind of see we left the four by floppy negative fills there just because we were in a rush. That's how it goes. Uh, same with this one is it seems like a super simple lighting setup and it really, really is. We just have this big light over here and then maybe 40 feet to the right, we have another big stadium light. This was a complex of about 15 soccer fields all going back this way. And so we knew we... We checked with uh, the complex before on the location scout and there were lights over here that we actually had to get an electrician to come the night of to turn off so we didn't get kind of just light coming from both sides and then our shadows are getting all over him while we film. So we just used these two sources of uh, light right over there and made sure everything else was off. Shot from an apartment of the mural being painted right down here. There is the painter Odith, very talented man from Portugal. 
and this is just natural light up against the window. We just tilted them up like that so that, you know, we weren't blowing anything out too much and kind of softening the light a little bit. Natural light in here. And this is just reverse of uh, the TV shot we did earlier. So same room, TV's right over here. And so if you can imagine Nova just bouncing off a little bit of room tone on the ball or green tone on the ball. And then that orange light that's coming from the light mat 2L and the 2300s coming through the window. Same exact setup, just reverse. We have the B7Cs right over here. Uh, just some lamps in frame that we set. And then this Nanlite six inch tube. And this is just where little pockets of light can really help bring the scene together. Cause without these, this would just be a green and an orange glow in a room that would just maybe feel kind of weird. Uh, the green is definitely like a stylistic choice we went for. It's not something that exists in a lot of homes really, but it's what we went for. And then you can see kind of the haze coming in over here that gives us some of that atmosphere with the uh, lights coming in. A little close up on there, same exact setup, nothing changed, just moving in, lit the space and a little match cut there. Back to outside, uh, we're just shooting this all natural light right here, as a matter of fact. This was on the helium, so you can kind of see this chart was harder to match because the helium doesn't doing so good in low light versus the black magic, which was dual base ISO. So we actually shot most of the running stuff on the helium, but then back at nighttime at the end of the night, like this shot, which we shot at 11 or midnight after all the running stuff, we switched back to the black magic because it was just cleaner at uh, higher ISOs. This is just straight up a 300X on a battery power with the dome right above her eyes. So angled up a little bit high so we wouldn't get a catch light in her eye knowing that we wanted to do this VFX and have that kind of take precedence over any catch light that we'd have in there. So sweet little shot. And again, with the diopters, is it's creating this weird like almost, I, I don't even know what you call it, fall off or something where it's just, it looks very interesting and I, I kind of like that. So the cheap diopters, uh, they're kind of cool if you want to do a cool look. This shot was fun because we shot a clean plate of this whole soccer field right here. We just had that one big light coming up there. You can kind of see it. And besides that, all these stands, we or all these soccer balls that are floating, we just shot different plates of them, put it on a combo stand, raised the combo stand, lowered the combo stand, whatever, and then cut them out in post and then made them kind of have this little rise. You can see right over here and even added in some like anamorphic blur in Da Vinci just to make them look a little bit more out of focus and a little more magical. As far as everything else there, um, I think these we added these in post too, these little sparkles that are flying around. And then the way we got the boy to float was it's actually two shots stitched together. We used two combo stands and some speed rail, and he actually hung from it for like 10 seconds, little champion. And that's where we got this part of the shot from. So he's just hanging there. And then we did another shot where he's standing on a Pelican 1510 case, and that's where we got this shot. And then we just equaled them together and next thing you know you got a, a boy floating above the soccer field here we go big blast of light coming in there we knew we wanted just super flary right here so that's why we did that you can kind of see the room tone getting really blue over there next to the novas again more running stuff a little blue light in there nothing crazy uh this is just the 300x with the one foot by four foot softbox giving a glow and then we just took this in color and turned this more blue kept this more orange and really just exaggerated everything we did on set in color. It was kind of the, the way we went about that. Nice little running sesh right here. This was all natural light with just two big uh, negative fill floppies kind of right on the set of camera over here just to really just silhouette our gentleman here. And same setup you see before. This was, we actually shot this on a scissor lift. So this is what I was talking about. How are we gonna get a wide of this uh, basketball gym without like an actual wide lens? We're just on this one lens this whole time. so. We're just in this very corner of the basketball gym with the scissor lift up here. Um, and yeah, that's how we got the, our, our wide, if you will. More diopter stuff, super simple. This is just pumping like a 300X into the ceiling, just a little bit of room tone. And then maybe we had the uh, light mat 2L over on this side, just giving that, which eh, eh, nothing crazy beautiful, but figure you might want to know how we do that stuff. And again, natural light. This man is way older than this man right here. So... He was uh he was just our PA on set that day and he ended up bowling him. So you thank you, thank you, Mike, for doing that. Uh this is a fun shot where it was again, we were like, ah, typically we just put a wide angle on and film her coming into the room, but we had to make do. So we had this big mirror and we were on kind of the tighter angle and then shot the sit down in the mirror. So I love that that little shot and just little things like that that we figure out on set. Um what was this right over here? I think Brady put up a light and then shot it through a mirror that was out here and then through a plant in that mirror. And that's how we kind of got that 
interesting little shape on the door. Just the little things like that. You can figure out how much goes into one quick little shot that's in there. And then this is just, again, the F22C boomed in overhead with an egg crate set to a super warm uh, color tone. So giving that right there. And then we moved it forward a tiny bit to get this uh, kind of fill on her face right over here. Again, you can kind of see the smoothness of the little rickshaw dolly that we were talking about. So you can get it smoother if you want. It's not quite Dana dolly smooth, but it's definitely way faster than setting up a Dana dolly because you just wheel it around like it's a little grocery cart and just sit on it. So especially if you put a gimbal on it or something, it can be super cool. Uh, nothing fancy happened here. Same exact setup as before. We just have this little bit of light coming on his face from, I think it was another one of the overhead practicals in this room. A little foreground through the fence. Why not? A little bit of that, a little bit of this. And now we're in kind of the intense montage training sequence. So again, another rickshaw shot. Uh, I'm just sitting on the rickshaw holding the camera handheld and our homie Henry is just pushing me. So that's how we're doing this without like full on gimbal running shot, but enough to be used, especially at a longer focal length where it's not super shaky. We kind of timed it with her to be, okay, press, look at your watch and then go, 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 go. So that's fun. Again, with these ones, we're actually on a, I'm hanging on the back of a golf cart on this that our buddy Brooks is driving. And again, more handheld stuff, but at a long focal length, just riding on something electronic or with wheels. So it's not super shaky. He nailed that shot right into the corner there, which was awesome. And again, another rickshaw dolly push in right over here. Um, handheld until, and we're on a tripod on the top of a mountain down in LA. Uh, we just took a day off and went and shot that plate of the city and it was kind of nice it was a nice foggy plate smoky that day which was kind of fun next thing you know we're at the crypto.com arena the mural's right over here and there is the mural it's getting finished painting it was about one week two week process can't remember but it was fun we just got to hang out in chairs in this parking lot and just uh watch odith and everyone paint and yeah it was, it was nice more shots this was we just put the camera on a piece of paper and created like a little slider on the table nothing super fancy there and more diopter shots up close shot some shots around town here we go found footage story blocks and story blocks iphone shot in our studio hit up tattoo artists to get pictures and footage from our producer warren at a game and this was our homie from uh, way back in the day he just sent us this video because we needed something victorious looking. So reaching a max, same setup as before on this stuff, uh, a little bit hazy in the room, but not super noticeable. looks like we dialed down the Nova for the green room tone down at a little bit here. And then we just have this really warm glow. That's the window that the 300 X's were coming through. And then I think that was it. Simple as that. Just a little kiss on the back there. These hero shots were just one foot by four foot soft box again on them super portable that was kind of like our light that we would just run around with if we needed a little kiss of light somewhere wasn't as like soft as just a regular light dome because we could turn it you know if we turn it this way then it's going to have more wrap around the face this way versus if we turned it this way then it would have less wrap and a little bit more of a dramatic lighting so uh, that's why we chose to have this one up on a combo stand basically ready to roll around and not uh, just your traditional light dome so we could choose how soft we wanted the source by just turning it. Uh, next, we just have some outside shots right here with a little five-in-one reflector, just bouncing a little extra level on the face there. And from the apartment across the street again, and final shot on the tripod. So yeah, that's a quick technical run through of how we shot the film. If you like that style of breakdown where we just run through the, the final piece super fast and I'll just talk about it, let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions or anything, uh, feel free to reach out through various forms of internet and social media or put it in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can and we can learn and grow as filmmakers together. So thanks for watching and until next time.